Got to be one of the highlights of the year, watching that. And as we think of a children's Christmas production, the one word that to me just comes out of what we just saw is the word joy. Just joy radiating from them. And there's something about children and their joy, isn't it? It's an innocent joy. Uh, it's a simple joy. They don't carry all the stuff that we as adults carry. They just have a simple joy in what Jesus has done and the joy of life. I want to read for you a couple of verses from the Word of God, a couple of verses that we already heard in the course of the play here, and to share a few minutes with you tonight from those verses. Uh, we read in Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, starting in verse 8, In the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom He is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. Let me pray for a moment. Father, this is your word. Uh, what a joy to see the children tonight uh, act out and to share uh, the truth of Christmas. As we take just a couple of minutes tonight, God, while the children get their costumes off and, and, and get things organized, just to consider the truth of Christmas and who Jesus is and the joy that we can have in him. Help us, Lord, give us a few moments here in the quietness of our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, I've said this before, one of the events in the Bible that I would love to have been there for and to, to see would have been that night somewhere outside of Bethlehem. We say the hills of Bethlehem, we're not sure, hill, valley, somewhere outside Bethlehem there were some shepherds and the glory of God appeared to them out there. What a sight that would have been. Uh, the shepherds, it was any other night. They were out there watching their sheep and, 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 and maybe some of them were dozing off as the evening sets in and it's dark outside. And then in an instant, everything is not normal. The glory of the Lord shines upon them. Uh, now, the text here doesn't exactly say what that looked like, but we know from elsewhere in Scripture where that happens, that the brilliance of God's glory, the, the blinding light of God's glory, an angel is there. And, and what strikes me as interesting and, and odd is that it says the disciples or the shepherds were filled with great fear. Now, I don't know if you as a parent have had the experience of being awoken in the middle of the night by one of your sweet children flicking on the light. <clears throat> now, there are a range of emotions that I would go through in a time like that. Great fear is generally not one of them. It's possible the children may experience great fear uh, in the ensuing moments of that. But, but the light that shines, I mean, these, these shepherds are, are not, are, are, are people that have been on the hillsides. They have seen wolves and they have seen lions and bears. Uh, these are men who have spent many a night outside. So when it says they're greatly afraid, we would say, well, well what is it? Why are they so afraid? See, the glory of the Lord is not just the light. It's not just brilliance. The glory of God is the presence of God. The shepherds were alone outside Bethlehem, and in an instant, they knew they were not alone. The presence of God was in that place in a way that they had never known the presence of God in their lives before. It was unmistakable. As that angel spoke to them, they knew God was there. And we say, well, why would they be afraid? Why would they be afraid if God was there? Well, in the moment as they behold the brilliance of God and the majesty of God, as we see throughout Scripture, any person who beholds the glory of God instantly is aware not only of the presence of God, but of their own sinfulness. And the response throughout Scripture, when everyone, whenever, whenever anyone sees the glory of God, 
is to be acutely aware that they are unworthy to be in such a presence. And not just unworthy as in, as in this God is way better than them, but that God is holy and that they are not. And in a moment, the shepherds are filled with great fear. Why? Because the only response that they would assume would happen would be their judgment. The holiness of God was there, and they knew in an instant they were far from holy. And so it says they were filled with great fear. But then the angel speaks. And in that moment, there's no, there's no more reassuring words that could have been spoken than the angel's words, fear not. Fear not. Why? Why should these shepherds not fear? Why should the shepherds who, who are in the presence of the living God, why should they not fear? Because the angel says, I do not come with a message of judgment. I bring you good news of great joy. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. See, the shepherds in Bethlehem, they were not just your ordinary run-of-the-mill shepherds. The shepherds around Bethlehem were tasked with a specific job to raise sheep for the temple in Jerusalem. Jerusalem was just a few miles away, and so the sheep that the shepherds of Bethlehem raised were to be used for sacrifice in the temple. Uh, they had raised hundreds of sheep, and those sheep, if they, were ble- if they were without blemish, if they had no defect, they would be taken to the temple and used for sacrifice in the temple. The shepherds were very aware of the cost of sin. Their livelihood was off the sheep that would go to be killed for the sins of the people. But the shepherds also knew this, that the sheep, the killing of the sheep, the sacrifice of the sheep did not take away sins, for they had to keep sending more and more and more and more sheep. But the angel's message was this, the final sheep has come. The last one has come. And this one born in Bethlehem this night, he will save his people from their sins. He will be the final sacrifice offered once for all for the sin, not just of those shepherds, but for all mankind. That the message of the angel was this. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Not just you shepherds there. Not just for the residents of Bethlehem that you will declare it to, but for all people of all time. The Savior has come. God has sent forth His Son, born of a woman, to redeem sinful mankind. Uh, The reality is that's the, the message for you and I tonight. That is where we find our joy, the reality that Jesus has come. That's what we celebrate at Christmas. The Savior has come for us. And and, and as far off as that night 2,000 years ago seems, the glory of God is just as brilliant as ever before. The holiness of God has not changed. And the chilling reality that I get as I read Luke chapter 2 is that one day we will all stand before that God. We will all behold the holiness of God. The living God is not mocked. And we will all give an account before Him someday. But that is exactly why Jesus came. It's not a message of judgment, but a message of joy, because he came to take your sin and my sin on himself. And we would say, well, if I could just see that glory, if the angels tonight could just maybe appear on the way home, if I could see something like that, then maybe. There there is no place that you can look to see the glory of God more brilliantly displayed than the cross of Jesus Christ. For it's on the cross that the Son of God gave His life for you and for me. John writes in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever would believe in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. You know, Pastor Eric, this morning he preached about the response, three responses in Matthew chapter 2. And that's the reality is you and I have a response. We have a choice to make with Jesus. The disciples had a choice to make. The glory of God was there. The message had been sent. 
the disciples just could have went back to their nap. They just could have went back to the sheep and said, well, okay, I guess we carry on with life. It just could have made no difference in their life. Uh, the shepherds could have got angry that, that God would interrupt their lives in such a way, that God, would, that God would change the path of their life. But no, the shepherds did what? The shepherds left immediately with haste and went to see the child. And they returned with joy at what they had heard and what they had seen. The choice is yours tonight. Jesus has been born. He has come. And he has died for your sins and for my sins. And you can ignore that message. You can just put that off. That makes no difference to me. I don't care. But it doesn't change the fact that one day we will all stand before him. You can get angry at that message tonight. And you can get angry at me. And, and how dare this guy stand up here and say these things to me. And I don't want anything to do. But that doesn't change the fact that God loves you. And he sent his son for you. And he will not give up on you to pursue or tonight, like the shepherds, you could say, that message is for me. The Savior has come. The Savior has been born. The Savior has been born for me. The last song that we're going to sing uh, is called, What Child Is This? A familiar carol, but it asks a very important question. <laughs> what child is this? What child is Jesus? And that's the question that we all have to answer. There's lots of questions in life that we may find answers for or never find answers for, but there's one question we have to answer, and that is the question of Jesus Christ. The children have shared that message so joyfully and wonderfully with us, but I ask you tonight, what do you do with Jesus? What is your choice? What is your decision tonight? And there's nothing we would love more than to be able to share with you in more detail about how 